guys you guys are welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel for those of you who have not yet subscribed to the channel please endeavor to subscribe to the channel also turn in your notifications after your subscription so that whenever videos are being uploaded you always be notified to come and watch okay so in this video we are going to focus on further integration we are going to be solving a tutorial question which was proposed by one of the students in our whatsapp groups who face difficulty with, with the problem all right so let's get started so as you can see the question displayed to you i'm just going to read the question so the question reads given that i of n is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x times 1 minus x cube all that raised to the power n to x show that 3n plus 2 times i of n is equal to 3n in 3n times i of n minus 1 hence evaluate i2 okay so basically in problems like this we we, we use the integration by part principle to to prove this um relationship between i of n and i of n minus one all right so basically for you to first of all begin the integration by part process you need to know what you're going to let to be u and what you're going to let to be dv because you know the integration by part you need your u your v and your dv okay so um you go back to your proof your proof says you according to your proof right you have an i of n you have an i of n minus one um, your i of n has been given yes but what is i of n minus one you simply come to i of n and replace the n here with n minus one so i of n minus one is the integral from zero to one of x times one minus x cube all that raised to the power n minus one since i of n is um doing it you raise it back to the power n and um for me to have a power here which is n minus one it simply means i have differentiated this function which is 1 minus x cubed all that to the power n because you know the principle to differentiate you must subtract um, you must remove 1 from the power and removing 1 from n we arrive at um, n minus 1 so clearly <clears throat> that hints us on on which function we are going to let to be u and which function we are going to let to be dv we know that the function we are letting to be u is a function we are going to differentiate and the function we are letting to be dv is a function we are going to integrate so since we have seen that for us to have um, the power here decreased by one we need to differentiate this function and i can see an i of n minus one in my um in my proof then basically i'm going to let my u to be one minus x cube <coughs> raised to the power n so that when i differentiate the power is going to decrease by one all right so how do i now differentiate the function u first principle if i have f of x to be equal to g of x raised to the power n differentiating f of x what i do is that i differentiate the function g of x which gives me g prime of x then later on i drop down the power which is n and then i raise my g of x raised to the power i decrease one from the power so um, that's how we differentiate functions like that and um, another principle is that if i want to differentiate x raised to the power n what i do is that i just drop down the power n and then i did and and then i take the x raised to the power n minus one that's a uh, basic law because in this case you see my g of x is one minus x cubed so to differentiate g of x to get g prime of x i'm going to differentiate one which is a constant i'm going to get zero i'm going to differentiate negative x cube and i'll use this principle so with that said we can get our du that is the derivative of u with respect to x so du is going to give us i differentiate the interior which is my g of x i'm going to get um, the negative sign is there so i drop down the theory i have negative theory now i take my x raised to the power theory minus one negative theory x squared now later on i drop down the n which is the power and then i multiply it with the very function but now to the power n minus one the x okay so i've succeeded to get du now the remaining part of my integral becomes my dv because in my integral i'm now left with this x here and i'm left with the dx since my u was just this middle part so i now need to get v and i know that if i integrate dv i'm going to get v so i now integrate both sides 
integrating the v on the left hand side i'm going to get v and integrating x dx i'm going to get x squared divided by 2. now the integration by part principle says that my integral i of n will give me uv since i have um limits of integration i need to put the limits of integration in, in the um in the function uv then now minus the integral from <coughs> my limits of integration as well 0 to 1 of v du many students make an error here they usually they don't replace your limits of integration in the function uv which is very wrong endeavor to always impute your um your limits of integration it is when you have an indefinite integral that you allow your uv without no limits and also your integral here without no limits but when you have your limits of integration always impute your limits of integration in uv okay so with that since we know our u we know our v and we know everything we just replace so my u is what is in red is um sorry my my v is what is in red is x squared on two my um my u is now one minus x cubed all that way to the power n from zero to one minus the integral from zero to one of v du my v is in red x squared divided by two and my um du is in blue negative three x squared times n times one minus x cubed all that way to the power n minus one dx okay so with that we can fit our upper limit if i fit x equal to one this i have um one divided by two here but the interior here goes to zero so the upper bound fits me here you get zero if i fit x to be equal to zero the interior you just have one raised to the power n but fitting x to be equal to zero here everything is going to give us zero so it means this um this term here gives us zero so at the end we can now um pull out the constants out of the integral the constants are the are the um, terms that do not depend on x so i have negative three times n then um divided by two because those they, they don't depend on n so the negative outside here multiplies with negative three n divided by two we just get three n divided by two then i have my x squared here and then i have this other x squared here then times the remainder of the function okay so with that said things now become very complicated in this case because um you're trying to to see how you can actually get to this proof okay now i go back to my proof i see an i of n minus one i go back to my i of n i know that for me to get i of n minus one this n here just needs to be changed to n minus one and i arrive at i of n minus one so um i come back to where i am i have an x squared i have an x squared and then i have a one minus x cubed raised to the power n minus one if i just consider this one minus x cubed raised to the power n minus one i see that to compare it with um let's say we consider the integral and just this portion of um, one minus x cubed raised to the power n minus one we see that to also get i of n minus 1 we need a an x there we need to multiply um this part 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n minus 1 with an x so doing that um i'm going to rewrite the integral in this way i'm going to we see the part in red because it resembles i of n minus 1 regarding uh if you take into consideration the integral sign the integral sign from 0 to 1 and this part in red is just i of n minus 1 without the x cube i'm doing that because i see it in my proof okay because um look at this x squared times x squared is x to the power 4 but since i need to extract a certain x it means i'm going to be left with x cube now um what am i going to do next this is what i'm going to do this term here which is 1 minus x cubed all that raised to the power n minus 1 is the same as 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n times 1 minus x cubed raised to the power negative 1 if we pair this two that's multiplying um functions of the same basis we add their powers and n minus 1 um is the same as n plus negative 1 okay and now 1 minus x cubed raised to the power negative 1 is the same as 1 divided by 1 minus x cubed raised to the power 1 so we are going to rewrite this as um the numerator is 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n and the denominator now becomes 1 minus x cubed because um the numerator if you take it back to the numerator you get 1 minus x cubed raised to the power negative 1 okay so that's how i'm going to rewrite back my integral i have this x cubed is already there right 
now this uh, 1 minus x raised to the power n minus 1 i replace it remember this x is still there now i replace it with 1 minus x cube raised to the power n then divided by 1 minus x cube you see i'm trying to pair things together because if i consider just this integral sign and this portion in in black is it represents my i of n you see okay so from there now what becomes of this term here let's see how we can simplify this term to get things that are going to help us okay so we are going to either use a trick which i'm going to show you or you can use um, partial fractions and so partial fraction this term here since the numerator and the denominator have the same degrees you first got undergo long division yes but um, i'm not going to do long division i'm going to show you a trick which will um, prevent you from doing long division okay so x cubed divided by 1 minus x cubed what i'm going to do is that i'm going to make the denominator to look like the numerator so this is what i'm going to do my denominator is 1 minus x cubed right so my numerator i need to get a setting maybe x cubed minus 1 or 1 minus x cubed it all depends on you but applying that step you need to make sure that the numerator the, the, the numerator needs to come back to its original form so if in the x cubed in the numerator i i subtract a one it means i need to add back a one so that the negative one plus one is going to give us zero so i'm going to now pair the terms in this in this way i'm going to take x cubed minus one because i can see a relationship with with that in the denominator and i'm going to take one separately now i'm going to divide each term so um, i'm going to take x cubed minus one divided by the denominator then plus one divided by the denominator because they have the same common denominator that's why this is possible now x cubed minus one we can write it as negative into one minus x cubed because if this negative sign multiplies this numerator we get to x cubed minus one so we have not changed anything so in essence we have um, one minus x cubed divided by one minus x cubed is one but there is a negative sign there and then this part remains intact so with that said it means that this um part here becomes negative one plus one divided by one minus x cubed now we are going to replace it back in our integral and we try to simplify things remember we are heading to our proof so my integral becomes i of n to be equal to in the place of um, x cubed divided by one minus x cubed i replace it with its identity which is negative one plus one divided by one minus x cubed then times the remaining part of my integral which is x times one minus x cubed all that way to the power n okay now what i'm going to do is that um i'm going to rewrite back my one over one minus x cubed as one minus x cubed raised to the power negative one so i've just we are i've just um changed this one divided by one minus x cubed back to one minus x cubed raised to the power negative one now this this term in in black i'm going to call it one quantity so i'm going to take x into one minus x cubed raised to the power n i'm going to mul multiply it with negative one and then later i multiply it with 1 minus x cubed raised to the power negative 1 okay so doing that we have our 3n on 2 if i take this quantity in black which is um x into 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n dx i multiply it with negative 1 i just get the negative of it right and then now um plus because the the next term the the sign here is plus the very 3n on 2 times now the very quantity which is x into 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n then times 1 minus x cubed raised to the power negative 1 since uh, my 1 minus x cubed is um is common between them and i'm multiplying the the two functions which have the same base i just add the powers so i just take the n plus negative 1 here which is n minus 1 now what do we discover anyways let's first of all remove out this negative sign from here so we just pull out this negative sign and we uh, we have the same um the same i of n so with that what can we say about um let me try to indicate a function what can we say about this portion of the integral yes and uh, this other portion of the integral now let's go back to our original integral we see that this portion of the integral which is the integral from 0 to 1 of x times 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n is simply our i of n and uh, this other portion of the integral that is the integral from 0 to 1 of x into 1 minus x cubed raised to the power n minus 1 is clearly i of n minus 1 
because to get i of n minus 1 i just come to my integral i of n and i subtract 1 from the power okay so with that said now we are going to replace um, those integrals with their um, respective identities okay so it means our i of n which is on the left hand side is going to be um, I have my negative 3n divided by 2 but now the integral here is i of n and then I also have my 3n divided by 2 and the integral here is i of n minus 1 now I can multiply all through by 2 if I multiply i of n by 2 I get 2i of n if I multiply this quantity by 2 the 2 just cancels with that in the denominator and I just get negative 3n times i of n if I multiply this quantity by 2 the 2 cancels in the denominator as well and I get 3n times I of n minus 1 now I need to pair the i of n's together so what I do is that what I'm going to do is that I am going to add 3n i of n on both sides of the equation if I add it to this side of the equation I get this if I add it to this side of the equation it cancels with this and I'm, I, I'm just left with this so with that um, on the left hand side i of n is common so we can remove the i of n as a factor and we get 3n plus 2 on the right hand side we see have our 3n times i of n minus 1 so in a nutshell we have proved that if i of n is equal to this integral then 3n plus 2 times i of n is equal to 3n times i of n minus 1 which is what was required to prove okay so the last part is asking us to evaluate i2 that's going to be your assignment the comment section of the youtube channel is open yes you can give comments you can evaluate i2 and um, you, you give your comments there yes the value that you had for i2 i'm going to tell you if you are correct or you are not correct for those of you who are um, still facing difficulties with this topic from time to time we are going to be uploading videos and showing you different techniques on how you need to tackle problems of this sort if you love the video please like the video share the video with your friends with your teachers yes this this video is actually made for everybody students teachers um, parents and and anybody who is interested in mathematics if you face difficulties in maybe you have not understood any explanation here try to comment so that you know how we can we can explain better in our next videos because it's from your comments that you are going to know if um, we are progressing with our explanations or we are not progressing so make sure you comment on the video if the video is good don't just watch the video and you maybe the video is good and then maybe you're excited that you have understood and then you don't comment your, com your comments are going to encourage us to produce um, other videos because we know that uh, we are trying to help and the helping hand is actually extending well so please make sure you comment on the video if the video is good the comment is very easy the video is good you give your comments and, and all the rest okay see you in the next video guys so see you in the next video and thanks for watching